Hi there. Thanks for joining CPG Bytes, a series of short video segments from Treasure Data, where we chat about the latest news and industry trends and read between the lines to provide our perspective and insights. So David, my friend, what do you have for us this week? Hey, how are you doing today, Stephen? I'm doing fantastic, David. How are you? Real good, thanks. So thought we'd mix it up. I guess I say that a lot. We're always mixing it up. We're going to really mix it up today. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, moderating a webinar just about an hour ago with uh, Treasure Data and AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Solemn Consulting. And it was a really, really interesting dialogue about using data and accessible insights to drive better decision making. And I thought I'd just talk about three things that I learned uh, through that discussion with these three key experts from a CPG industry perspective. Um, the first thing was interesting. We actually had a question from the audience saying, well, you know, if you're working for a, a big company, a big enterprise, a big brand, a global brand, CPG company, it's easier to get investments in technology and things like CDPs and these kinds of things. But how does a smaller or medium-sized business, you know, make those investments? And, you know, I think the the key point that came out of that discussion between uh, you know the three the three speakers is that you know size doesn't necessarily predicate whether there's an ROI or not, right? You can get an ROI regardless of your size. Um, you know, Danik even pointed out that something like I think twenty or twenty five percent of Treasure Data's customers have less than a million first party data records, right? So um, you don't have to have this large database to be this large global company and. Another point that was made, which I thought I've seen myself, and this is spot on, is that oftentimes the smaller companies can actually act with more speed and agility because they don't have either the legacy processes or legacy uh, data and, you know, kind of the infrastructure that they have to fight against, kind of the inertia, if you will, of the business. And so they can actually execute with speed something, and actually get to bright, if you will, and get to the you know faster ROI just because of the of the nature of the way their business is, is structured. So I thought that was that was pretty fascinating. Uh, you know, and then we we kind of pivot a little bit. We talk about how to get started, and um, I think this one concept that, that that percolated up, and again, I've seen this again and again in, in my career is, you know, don't let perfection be the enemy of the good. And as we're talking about using data and insights to drive better decision making, I think there's oftentimes this desire to get all your data right and get all your data integrations done and get every, all the ducks in a row. When the reality of it is, you know, that could take 6, 12, 18, 24 months, maybe even longer, depending on how many data sources you have, et cetera, right? And meanwhile, while you're trying to get that data correct, new data sources come in or the data changes. And so you're almost always chasing Kind of chasing your tail, if, if you will. And so, you know, the conversation was around, you, you've got to kind of pick a starting point and, and just get started, just, just get moving. And it, it ends up becoming kind of this self-fulfilling prophecy of goodness, right? The, the, the start small and it, it builds value and it keeps paying for itself. But the key part of that though is starting in the right place. And so there was a discussion around essentially use cases. So if you think about, um, you know, you have all this data and you want to you, you want to make it accessible and get insights from it. But at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is make better decisions. You know, where should I be placing my marketing bets or, you know, how do I get into direct to consumer, whatever those decisions you're trying to make, they're all predicated on data. But in the, the day, those, those decisions in themselves are use cases. So you have to, have to almost think about what's the outcome you're looking for and work backwards. And the, you know, a really good way to start that is sort of almost throw all your use cases out, you know, kind of on a whiteboard and then start grouping them and then start thinking about, well, what do I need to enable these use cases? Some cases it could be data in some cases it may be people, it could be process, it could be technology, whatever the case might be. But you lay those out, and then you can start thinking about where's the where's the low hanging fruit. Like where which of these use cases could be more easily addressed and more time you know faster time to value, if you will. It may not be the biggest value use case, but you got to balance the size of the prize with the speed at which you can implement it. And once you get those use cases laid out, you can prioritize them, and then again build this flywheel of value where 
the savings and the, the, the value from use case one helps pay for use case two, three, four, five, et cetera. And you almost become, you have kind of a self-funding model versus trying to boil the ocean and, and build out the, you know, the giant <laughs> you know, enterprise starship, if, if you will. And I think what's interesting, it kind of gets back to the first point about smaller companies, those use cases can be small manageable bites of, of capability, if you will. And the technology is such today with you know, most software being delivered, you know, it's mostly cloud-based, right? And it's software as a service. So you can get started relatively inexpensively and relatively rapidly versus you know, back in the day when you had to buy the enterprise footprint, if you will, and install it on-prem and there's a lot of IT costs, it, you know, loaded up front. So, anyway, I thought it was a it was a really good discussion. Um, but those were kind of the three takeaways that that I had from the discussions with AWS and Slalom Consulting and Danica from Treasury Data. No, and and that's that's absolutely true. I guess my takeaway from that, David, is just definitely don't wait, right? Don't wait until you go from a small smaller company to a large company to start formulating your data strategies and gain insights. Don't wait until you have all the puzzle pieces all together just to start, uh, because you don't want to wait to make better decisions today, right? I, I, I work for both small and, and large companies, and, and, the, and the benefit of the small companies uh, are plenty, right? But the, the fear of the small companies are that they are hesitant because they're worried that they don't have enough data. They, they're worried that this is a major investment why get the ROI from that, right? That's the, that's the question that you received. But on the other hand, large companies are hesitant as well because they may have too much dirty data. Right? They, have, they have all these data stored somewhere. Are they clean? Are they connected? And also there may be unknown data silos that are hidden somewhere that they are not aware of. So to both the small companies and, start, and the large companies, it, you got to start somewhere, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, we are making better decisions, whether you are big or small, um, at, the, at the mature stage or just taking your first step of, of knowing your data strategy, your end goal is the same. Your end goal is to make better decisions too. So to David's point that you can st already start with making good decisions if you start now and start small and start to build those business case, business use cases that will allow you to go, hey, I can prove small today and turn that into a bigger snowball later on because you, you have to start somewhere and you don't have to wait until you got all the ducks in the row to start. Some people may choose to do that, but that's another, another, um, I guess, uh, uh, obstacle to, to overcome. Yeah, I think your, your analogy with snowballs is a really good one, right? What you want to do is you want to build a platform that's essentially a snowball rolling down a hill, right? And it, it it's going to get bigger and build momentum. And you actually, I think, you know, in some of the conversations with some of the folks at Treasure Data, they they see this, right? The first use case might take X amount of time. The second one's a little bit less, third, et cetera, because you have some of the connections in place, some of the infrastructure, some of the learning, so on and so forth. So it, the speed, excel, the, the size gets bigger, the value gets bigger, and the acceleration gets bigger. So it's uh, that snowball analogy is a really good one. Agreed, agreed. Well, thank you, David, for the insights today and moderating the, the webinar and giving us some great tips. And thank you for joining us uh, to view the full webinar uh, with David uh, from May 25th. Please click on the Bright Talk link below to join the conversation between David, Treasure Data, AWS, and Slalom. And uh, the topic was Mastering the Art of Decision Making with Connected Data and Accessible Insights. Also, uh, don't forget to download the, re the report on making better decisions in the age of unpredictability, which the, the webinar was based on. So both of those are, are available for you to go view and download for free. And for more videos like these, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the bell for all notifications. We'll be back in two weeks with more topics for CPG Bytes. Please take care. Thanks, bye-bye.